say good morning. Thank you very much for uh, coming along this morning to do a, a dowsing session with myself. And um, what we're going to do is have a brief introduction about dowsing, how it works, and what it is, and put some basics in place. And then we're going to get out there and we're going to actually do the actual dowsing. In fact, I'll take two stages. The first is conditioning, and then we'll do the dowsing, and I'll explain the difference between the two. So let's begin with regards to dowsing and what's likely to be happening in regards to. Uh, how we how it works and how we're working with this. Um, if you can imagine here uh, starting with something like water and the, the dowsing rod and you and picking up the water 15-20 feet underground has to work with some sort of mechanism and if you start thinking about matter it's basically atoms, molecules, electrons, protons and neutrons and at the center of these electrons and neutrons, there's nothing solid at all. It's all energy. And it has a vibration. And the water molecules that you find will have its own vibratory field because it's, it's a particular combination of molecules in a certain range. It's different from perhaps oil, which will have a different vibratory field. Ourselves, we also have... Uh, mass, which gives us a field, you could call it our own gravitational field. We have uh, electromagnetism going through our bodies, through nerves and things like that. So we have an electromagnetic field of sorts around us. But we also have cells that vibrate and we have electrons and things like that. Also energy that vibrates. So we have a collective field, which is our electromagnetic field, our gravitational field, and our vibratory field. So I call those three fields, if you like, and there may be even more, but it's our collective field. And that everything else around us, every bit of matter, will have a field of energy of sorts, a gravitational field, a vibrational field, an electromagnetic field. Water molecules, the same thing. So, it's just like two pebbles in a pond. If you throw them into a still pond, you'll see the ripples from those pebbles central, going out outwards in nice circles and when they meet there's this interference pattern and the peaks of the waves will give you a nice little sort of spike as the waves interact. So you could imagine that throughout our movement through the world we're constantly interacting with all these different fields on, on, a, on a very small basis of the energy. Now just because we can't see the water 15-20 feet underground it still has its own vibratory field. Now consciously I don't know it's there, but my subconscious is perhaps well aware of all the vibratory interchanges that are going on with the energies. So what we're looking at here is the connection between our conscious mind and our subconscious, where our subconscious is aware of so much more than we are. What we need to do is to somehow find a way to connect with the conscious and the subconscious in a way that we can get information back from that subconscious in a meaningful manner. And the way we do that, in this particular case, is dowsing, but we can do it in quite a few different ways. And in fact, you have already probably done this before. If you perhaps wanted to get up at five in the morning, very early on, you would say to yourself last thing at night, I must wake up at five o'clock, I must wake up at five o'clock. You might say this five times, you might hit your head against the pillow five times. But the strange thing is, when you are asleep, your conscious mind has dropped off and all you're now going on is you're on your subconscious. And somehow, your subconscious will wake you up exactly at five o'clock in the morning. You can check the clock and you see how accurate it is. And you can, a bit of practice, you can get very good at this. You could do it to the nearest two or three minutes, perhaps. But what it's telling us is that there is some way that our subconscious can send us information back to our conscious to reactivate the conscious mind. So there is already a form of communication between the conscious and subconscious when we're asleep and when we're not asleep. So what we need to be looking at is what can we learn from that? How can we add to that not in a way that we can get information back from our subconscious that's meaningful to our conscious? And we do it very simply by actually looking at what we did with our mind before we went to sleep. We programmed it. We used self-suggestion, self-hypnosis, to program our subconscious mind to do something for us. This is one of the very important parts of initially dowsing, is that you need to know the difference between suggestion, self-suggestion, self-hypnosis, and when you're not 
using self-suggestion. Because believe you me, when you douse, you can make things up easily. I can make a line there, and I can make the rod move wherever I want. And you'll be able to do the same thing. But making the rod move when you want, and making it all up, that's a fine line before you're dowsing rubbish. So you need to be able to know the difference between self-suggestion and non-self-suggestion. But recognize the importance of self-suggestion in the initial stages of building up this way of communicating with your consciousness between your consciousness and your subconscious. So I need to program my mind to get responses from the subconscious. And one of the ways we start this is if your subconscious is going to it kind of pick up and tell the, subconscious, the conscious mind what to do, you've got to give it a way it can do that. So one of the first exercises we do is we take the rod and consciously try and make this rod move from here to here and back again. Because if you haven't got a good way of doing this consciously, and I'm consciously doing this, I don't have to not make this, this is actually practice, and you're going to practice to do this, but if I can do this well, it means that at least my body can give me the instructions that I'll be able to read. Now, we're, we're working with just two, two movements here, straightforward for a no, and that way for a yes. And at this stage, people say to me, why aren't you using two rods? Well, you can use two rods. But unfortunately, if you use two rods, you can't hold anything with this hand. And that's sometimes quite difficult if you want to hold a steering wheel. <laughs> okay? But you, you may think, well, it only works when the rods cross. Well, you think that, but then what if you think a pendulum? We only use a pendulum with one hand. Okay? I don't have two pendulums. So what's going on? Do we need two rods? Do we just have one? What am I doing here that's making this rod move, either backwards and forwards? or circles like this. And you start looking at the strangeness of dowsing. When you ask people, what, what do you get your responses when it looks at the pendulum? And personally, backwards and forwards like this, that's for me a yes. For a no, it goes around in circles like this, for me. But then you get another dowser who will say, well actually, it's anti-clockwise, so no, clockwise is a yes, and Anti-clockwise is a no. What's going on here? Well, then you begin to understand it's the individual themselves who program the responses that they will understand coming back from the subconscious. So it's not about a particular way of being right. It's how you're programming a response so you understand. And with this, you could actually get it so there's nothing at all. No movement. And that might mean something on a third symbol. Like, so you've got... Backwards and forwards means a yes, around like that means uh, a no, perhaps. But dead still like that, you could attribute something else to it. For, for me, with the rod, if I'm getting a halfway response like this, which is no yes, and it's not, not properly a yes, not properly a no, what it tells me is I need to rephrase my question to be more specific, so that I can get a definite no or a definite yes. But I'm beginning to add on more and more so that my subconscious knows how to communicate back to me. This is nice, a simple way. You can do this in your sleep, and uh, this, in, in you get your dreams back. You can actually find that the dreams have lots of symbolism in them. But what do the symbols mean? Well, unless you've had a, a, a sort of programming and a conditioning that certain symbols will mean certain things, you know then that you, you're getting a symbol of, of, a, of a particular item that will mean something to you. Now, I have a friend who's a, an amazing uh, dream detective, Chris Robinson. When his youth, in his youth, he used to go off in his van and sleep. He would find a, a place to park on the side of the road, probably an energetic place. And he would program himself with symbols so that if he dreamt of those symbols, it would mean something specific. And he's got a, 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 probably around 2,000 symbols right now. And he came to fame back in the 70s when he dreamt of uh, Irish terrorists in a Cheltenham hotel. And he rang the police and then went round to the Cheltenham hotel and found all this while making equipment. So this is brought into attention and they immediately arrested him. <laughs> but because uh, after a while he explained, now what I do is I dream about where I'm going to be in the next day or the next couple of days. That's what I do. And if, if I get more information, that it's probably if I see something maybe on the television or whatever I see, will be told me the day before. 
But he built this connection between the conscious and the subconscious, so he gets his results. And he's been tested. There's a professor at the University of Arizona in Phoenix called Professor Gary Schwartz. And, and in August 2001, Chris went out there. And there was a 10-day experiment. And every night he would go and dream about where he was going to be taken the next day. He would wake up, write down his notes. At that point, the professor would bring a friend in California. The friend in California would then ring another friend who the professor didn't know. And that person had 10, 20 envelopes, brown envelopes, sealed. And the instruction was to take one, open it, and that would be a location near Phoenix. Relay that information back to the professor. So in other words, a dream had occurred before the envelope had been picked. And so the professor would then drive Chris to that location. And I've seen the footage. They, they film everything from the dream onwards. 10 out of 10 days in a row, he got this right. Okay? There was a slight unfortunate side effect in this because in the middle of this experiment he got the dream of planes hitting the Twin Towers. Mm. This dream was filmed and, it, and it's, it's, it's on the date stamp. You can see it on, on the video footage and I've seen his video footage. Clearly, August 2001, he's there telling the professor that this is going to happen. And sure enough, uh, the way he does this you see, when he dreams of dogs, it means terrorists. And when he dreams of blizzards, it means bombs. And the, the numbers of dogs, or the number of the strengths of the blizzards, indicates the intensity of this. And also, uh, with other related objects and symbols, he gets more details. When the first plane hit, before the second one hit, he actually got a call. And in those days, there was a cell phone which basically just had your numbers. And, and normally you see the number of the person you're ringing. And he looked at it and it was just a whole zero, series of zeros. And he answered it and it was a general, a US general. <laughs> and, and the general said, we need to get you over here immediately. Okay? And Chris tried to tell him about the experiments he'd been doing with Professor Schwartz that, that, you know, only a few weeks before. Did you, are you aware of my work done with Professor Schwartz at University of Arizona? And the general said, we were appraised on a daily basis. He's since uh, got into the program with Fort Meade, and he's, Chris had a handler who was a chap called Colonel Drake, who came, became a whistleblower. It's another long story, but I've even seen Chris's transcripts, email transcripts, to the UK intelligence, days before leading up to London bombings on 7-7. I've read the emails. He, was, he knew this was going to happen. He dreamt of terrorists, dogs and blizzards. So what's going on with how we can dream the future? Well, it's, it's to do with reading people's minds and the universal mind, knowing the knowledge in advance. But his subconscious is giving him the information because he's programmed it to be able to get information back that is understandable. So we're doing the same thing with Daozi. We're tapping into our subconscious and connecting that with our conscious in a nice, easy way with forward for no and across straight and we can do the same with a pendulum like this so you then might ask well why do you not use a pendulum and when do you use a dowsing rod very simple if you understand how these things work if i force myself together and i hardly let this thing move clamming my leg hands and elbows to my side there's almost no chance of that rod moving if however i'm relaxed i'm loose my elbows out my side and i'm gently moving my body is swaying backwards and forwards. And you need a little bit of movement so that you get over that inertia. Okay? Just the same with pendulums. You can start with your pendulum up here, dead still, and it'll take ages before it starts swinging. So what happens is you ask the question down here, and you move up to this point, and it's swinging. It doesn't matter if it's the wrong way at the moment, but if you, if you do the operation carefully, which is you focus, and then go into an aware state, and that's really important, which I'll tell you a bit more. But you need the movement to be able for it to either go into a yes response or a no response or whatever the way you set it up. So you use a dowsing, dowsing a pendulum like this for when you're in a static situation and you're not walking around. So you may be in a chair. So that's when you would use a pendulum. If you're walking around, you're naturally walking around, you can use the rod. Okay? But these are just two things that will allow you to build up that connection between your conscious and your subconscious. 
And what I love about dowsing is that it's that connection which leads people on to something that's going to be beneficial from having built up that connection. If you think about uh, switching from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind, uh, you'll find that that channel, as it gets stronger, begin, you begin to get the information far more quickly and far more fluidly. And to the extent that you may be asking a question, and before you finish the question, the rod has moved. It's like it knows already. And then you begin to start finding that suddenly things will pop into your head without you thinking about it. Have you ever had uh, a, a time when you've actually wanted to think of something and something else flashed up in your head? So if I told you to think of a hippopotamus and a flamingo suddenly pops into your head, that wasn't your thought. You didn't want to set out with a flamingo in mind, but that's what pushed uppermost. So your, your subconscious is, is actually throwing you some information that's relevant to what you're doing at that point. It's just that you need to try and build up a system which you can understand about that. So I quite like dowsing because it begins to open up the channel between your conscious and your subconscious. And you think what your subconscious can do, what it can tap into, you know, all the sort of mental things that are out there, that opens up a massive potential to things like mediumship. Um, there's, there's a variety of things that can come from that, which I won't explain now. So dowsing. It happens to work easiest with things like water and energy because we have water in our bodies and we have energy. Okay, so what we've got to do is if we want to build up an uh, affinity to finding things like water, uh, we have to begin to condition ourselves so that our subconscious is aware that the water is there. So when we start, we start on a place where we know there's water under the ground. And we know that our the field, the energy field from the water is now interacting with the energy field of our bodies. So we, we would then allow our subconscious to connect with the energy of the water. So we just do that so that at the point in a few moments time, when we tell ourselves, I want to be able to get a response with my dowsing rod when I'm over that water. So you walk over and you get the response because you're over the water, you know it's already there. This isn't dowsing, this is preconditioning. This is the programming like you do at sleep at night. You're actually getting yourself used to your, your conscious and your subconscious connecting up so that your subconscious can give you information because it's already picked up this water field. You could use an energy line. And this is the important thing that uh, I, I mentioned before, uh, actually last night, which is with regard to feedback. If you douse for water and you get a response, you haven't doused yet until you've drilled it or you've checked it. And, and once you drill it and come down, you find you've got water where you doused for that reaction. You know that feedback is, is, is led to you seeing water. And we used to practice uh, on, on the fields of grass, which were sprinkler systems, the lawns. And you can actually douse for the water in the pipes that lead to the sprinklers. And as you walk across, you get that reaction. You then can put your uh, dowsing rod down into the grass. And if the dowsing rod went right down in and you missed the pipe, then you hadn't doused the water in the pipe. But generally, it hits the pipe. And water and earth energies are easy. So let's go and find other things. Unfortunately, some things aren't so easy. Gold, for instance. You, know, you could try dowsing for gold, but there's no an ounce of gold in your body. So this is a, an energy frequency that's probably more uh, uh, difficult to pick up. You are less familiar with it. So you need to work more and more at it. I specialize myself in water and in dowsing energy. I don't do health dowsing. I don't do uh, archaeological dowsing. I don't do uh, dowsing for minerals, although that is possible and people can do that. If you spend the time getting good at it, it's a skill. And with a skill, you have to practice and you get more and more better and better and better. And I soon realized it's going to take me about six years of dedication to, to be good at dowsing gold, which is a shame because I couldn't afford that time. But it's possible, and there are people who do get out of for gold. So you've got this ability to, to find things, but you have to build up that familiarity so that your subconscious can pick it up, and you can actually uh, get the response you want to know whether it's there. So what with dowsing, and you know you've got to build up that skill, you realize you've got to practice. And you've also got to condition yourself to begin with. And the interesting thing about earth energies, what we found when we teach people like that, is that some people find it's much easier to pick up some of these frequencies of earth energies than others. And invariably what you find is because they live on that energy and they already have a familiarity with that frequency. So they pick those lines up more easily than the others. 
And you, even today, when we go out there, you might find there's one or two lines which are actually easier to pick up than the other ones. So what we have to do is we have to sort of allow ourselves and our subconscious to be able to feel that collective field so that we have that connection between the two that we're uh, actually going to douse for. So the first bit we're going to be doing outside is learning to set up a system of rod control, conscious rod control. And then we're going to condition ourselves to a particular energy field of an energy line. So we're literally going to start on an energy line, we're going to walk into it, and you can, there you are, and you find it. This is conditioning at this stage. It's only dowsing when you take the, the next stage on from conditioning. So if you've familiarized yourself with water, and you, you've, you've conditioned yourself and your subconscious to recognize that the, the vibrational field of water, it's not until you go somewhere completely different and ask to find water somewhere where you have no idea because you don't know there's water underground. So you would walk off somewhere else, and now you're getting a response. Well, what's that? Well, that response is because you've actually asked the question, show me the same energy frequency of water that, that I found before. So you then would perhaps walk to the side and find there's a channel of water here, and then do some other things to find its depth. But you still haven't doused it, you haven't got the feedback yet. So you then would need to perhaps check the maps, or you need to drill to get that feedback. What we do with Earth Energy Lines is, once you've learned one energy line and you've, you've conditioned yourself to accept that, we take you to another area where there is a similar energy line and set you off. And then you, when you go there and you get a response, and you, may, you learn to find the direction of it and the width of it, and you come back to me and say, oh, I think I've got a response here, and it's about this wide, and it's in this direction. I then show you where, on the map what you've just found. So there is already a, a map of the energy lines in this area. It's only at that point that you know I've doused this energy line myself. And my feedback is seeing that the master map has got the exact same thing that I found already planned on the map itself. And that's when you can call yourself a dowser and you've doused that particular frequency of lines. So today what we're going to have to do is we're going to condition you to set up a system of yes, or no, yes, no up here. So it's nice and easy, backwards and forwards. So that when you actually do do the dowsing, the rod will move when you hit that field of frequency that you're looking for. This is the important part now, is when you ask the question, you have to be in a focused frame of mind. All right, so, so just look at the finger you have in front of you here. Focus on the nail of your finger. Focus at this stage needs to be so keen that there's nothing else going on but you looking at that particular fingernail, looking at its discolorations and colorations and you can't see anything else. But if you move that finger around like this, and then stop, you're still looking at the nail, but now you're aware in your peripheral vision of everything else that's going on around you. And this is not focus now, this is an awareness. You're in an alpha state, state an alpha state where there's all the information coming in from everywhere. You can measure the brain waves, you're in that sort of eight to 10 uh, cycles per second per, per, per brainwaves at this stage and alpha, alpha brainwaves. But this is an aware state and you've got to move from the focus question into this aware state. Now this is just visual awareness. You can do this with sound. So you can focus just on one person's voice the other side of the room. In a crowded room you can just allow yourself to hear that person speak and no one else. Now, even sheep can do this, listening to their own uh, tiny lambs. They'll, they'll blot out all the other sounds. Focusing just on one sound, and you can switch to that awareness of all sounds, all at the same time. You can take it one stage further, you can feel one thing in a focused feeling, to being aware of all the feelings. So when you combine all that, you end up with intense focus. When people can call you out and call your name and you have no idea they're there because you're so intensely focused on what you're doing. But then you can be aware in the sound of it. Feeling. And, and the really good now is you can switch from focus to awareness. And this is one thing that actually is quite tiring. And why an hour and a half of dowsing is tiring because it's the switch from focus to awareness. Focus in your conscious mind, you have to switch to the awareness of your subconscious to give you that information back. So that once we ask the question, we ask it, show me the edge of this energy line, and I want you to show me so that this rod moves from straight ahead to this position as I go through the energy line. Switch, awareness, and you walk. At this point, you want to not be able to move this rod 
with your mind. You want it just to, your subconscious mind to move this. So let's just have a look at the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. And just talk about, put your fingers together like this, about a centimeter apart. Okay? Out straight out in front. Now what I want you to do is just allow your mind to allow these fingers to come together and touch. Just by your mind, not with your muscles at all. A bit closer together. And after a while your fingertips will come together. Okay? There's no trick here. This is just you mentally allowing it to come together. Once you've done that, this time hold them only about a centimeter apart and keep them apart mentally. Do not let them touch. There's no tricks here. Anytime you want in the next 10 seconds, change your mind and let the fingers touch. And you'll notice when you mentally allow them to touch, they'll start coming together. So your mind controls your body. Now, the movements of the rod. If you want to get this rod from here to here, I'm telling you now, your body is doing this. There is no funny force. There is a muscles in your body, which you are consciously aware of and you can use. You can actually do this with your fingers, but you can allow your mind to move your body. So just by having my arm out like this and sway of my body, just by moving the pendulum up here like that, there is movement. And my body is moving. So I move, there's moving just enough for the subconscious work, the mind to work through me and to move the tiny little idiosyncratic movements and motor units inside my arms and muscles, moving but without my conscious mind interfering. And this is important because I can make up a line over here, I can make up a line over here, and you won't see my hand move. It's just all in the mind. There's another one and there's another one. But we don't want to make it up. With dowsing, you're only interested in the truth. But you need to know that you can make it up easily so that you know when you're not making it up. So when you're in that aware of your mind and looking to try and find water or whatever it is, you don't care where it is. You're not interested at all. You just want the truth. And it's not your mind that's going to make it up. Because you know when you use your mind, it's very easy to make it up. So you then go and let you're riding on subconscious. And the, the subconscious mind can work through your little muscle, muscle movements and the rods will move and you'll be looking, oh, it's moving. And then you realize that's, that's the response you're getting because the subconscious is coming through. It takes practice and that's what we're going to do in a minute. So this is roughly how we think dowsing works. Vibratory fields link between the conscious and subconscious mind and we're using the rods to give us a basic yes, no answer. It can get more complicated, we can add things to this, we can get more information back and what you find eventually is that you're going to get answers to your questions even before the, you finish asking the questions. The rods will start moving. It's not long before you'd be almost getting to that mediumship skill where you're having a two-way communication where you switch from focus to awareness, focus to awareness and you're getting you're getting a communication going on which you didn't expect into this whole connection to the subconscious in a way which is nice and safe. And that's uh, all I want to say about this now because it's time to get on and do some, some role work outside. So thank you very much for that. Okay, okay, so, so what, what about the rods that you use? Okay, so why, why are we using rods like this and why are we using rods like this? What, what is it all about? And, uh, and where do we go from rods? Well, the one thing I want to say is that this is the initial stages of dowsing. This is what we use to begin with to learn the trade, if you like. Now, for me, a short, simple rod like this moves quickly. It's great. And that's all you want. Answers, question, answer, question. Because when you're dowsing, you're forever doing quick questions, quick answers. This will work, okay? But this takes longer to move from side to side, okay? You could have it in a sleeve like this. This is great. It will work. Your body will make movements and the rod will move like this. The difficulty with this is in a wind. The wind will blow it everywhere. So that's a problem. So for me, it's too long and it's got a sleeve. Most people think it's got a sleeve because they don't want to think they're moving it. No, you're moving the rod. You are moving the rod. You're physically moving the rod, but not when your conscious mind, you're moving it in your subconscious mind. Okay, so this is easier to use a rod which is shorter it moves it doesn't matter what it is it can be anything it started with sticks they had fork sticks like this they were holding them roughly like this you hold the y of the fork stick and the, and the actual piece goes front like this and you pull it apart you create some tension and, and, and stick it there it's sticking out front like that 
and you still get the same yes no for response it will go down or it'll go up a bit like you want the pendulum to go yes for clockwise or no for anti-clockwise this is all very well you, you can pick up the sticks and they did in the old days you know why because it was banned so you can chuck, chuck, chuck away the stick and can't be paid name for it mm -hmm. I've used stick they're great but they tend to hit you in the head <laughs> so you know it's a gay carry around. I've had to. I've had to, and I've lost dowsing rods. I've just looked for sticks and, and, and do it. You can do that. You can. You can use it with plastic. But the rod, these sticks, they're the rod. They're the crutch. They're going to hold you back in the future. You don't need these. Once you've got this to start with, and your, your conscious and your subconscious is connected, you can go on to use other things. Particularly useful is your thumb and forefinger. Start, take your thumb and forefinger now and rub them together, and you can notice how nicely smooth that is. Add a tiny bit of extra pressure and you get some friction and it jerks and sticks. And that friction and the sticking and the smoothness can be your yes and no. So you can be walking in a, in a very sacred sort of place, so your arm down like this, asking for the centre of the line and suddenly you get the sticking point when you hit the centre of the line because your same little tiny idiosyncratic motor movements of your muscles, which are controlled by your subconscious mind and not your conscious mind, are putting a touch extra pressure between your thumb and forefinger. Because that's the symbolic system of interpretation that you've set up between your, between your minds to get that response. So it's not a symbol in your dream. This is just a yes-no response. It's not the rod moving backwards and forwards like that. It's just your fingers with a slightly extra pressure between the two. Practice it. It gets better. You don't get thrown out of places with a big, big, big uh, dowsing mm -hmm. rod. But you don't even need your fingers like this. Because if we had more time, what we do is we can connect with these energy lines and we can feel the effects of their frequencies on us. And they're different frequencies and they affect us in different ways. And some people I know, uh, they feel it in their solar plexus, they might feel it in the chest. There's one particular line, if we get to it today, you can feel it up. I feel it up here. There's a particular frequency on the moon phase lines which are not nice. They're lines you don't want to live on. It feels like someone's standing on your chest on this line. And you can take down your protective field and you can feel it. And every time you breathe, it's heavy. Some people feel it in their feet. But there's a technique to allow that frequency to begin to affect your collective field so that you feel that. And you learn to different, differentiate between all the different lines by the different feelings of your body. That probably a time to, to, to finish. <laughs> so let's crack on. Yeah. I actually teach uh, a competency based course for the British Society of Dowsers. And the first level one course, you have to learn 15 competencies. And the very first competency is the ability to have conscious rod control. That is literally holding the rod pointing to the front and allowing it consciously to move your hand so you know you're moving it, your mind is knowing you're moving it, you're twisting your, your wrist slightly, your elbow slightly, get that elbow out there, give it some chance to move. You can actually move slightly a little bit, but you want the rod to go 90 degrees, no more. So it's not swinging around like that. It's not going way this side like that because if you, you just want straight ahead across your body, straight ahead across the body. If you're doing your good like this, you can hardly move your hand at all and it's swinging backwards and forwards. Are you moving your fingers a little bit? No, not at all. No, it's just tiny movements. Uh, but initially, <laughs> yourself, get your elbow to the side, and it's a slight movement of the wrist, if anything. Slight twist in the arm. You're not kidding yourself. This is just setting up the conditioning, going backwards and forwards. What you do need is to hold the rod horizontally, and you, what you do need is to keep your knuckles out of the way. Like that will stop it, you know? So it's going from here to here and you can hardly see any movement backwards and now what I also tend to do is I like to have the little finger resting on it because I can feel it and what you find is that when you're looking for a response you'll feel it in your little finger you'll feel the twitches that little twitch is signifying that you're actually very close to getting that response you're looking for and that sensitivity is what you're going to be working on and allowing the rod to move eventually but as I said before this is the pre-programming stage just like Chris would say, right, I want dogs to mean terrorists, and I want blizzards to mean bombs. Don't give me the dreams of dogs and terrorists and, and, and blizzards unless you want to tell me information about that, you know, bombers and, and, and bombings. So here we are. Look, I only want to have a yes, no answer. So that's my yes. That's my no. We'll come to the pendulum later, but that's my yes. That's my no. And you need to try keep practicing this really lots of the time. When you're good at this, your subconscious mind can give you that information straight back like this. Don't worry, it takes a while. I've done it for years. Okay? So it's just 
training my body to get used to what this feels like. And the conditioning, that this is the response. You're mentally making this happen. You are creating the suggestion. You're conditioning yourself for this. This is self-suggestion. This is hypnosis in a way of, of getting you to wake up at five in the morning, just the same sort of basis of, of, of telling yourself the last thing at night. We're at the last thing at night stage here, conditioning your, your subconscious to give you answers in a way you can understand with simple yes, no's. And it's gonna do this. Now, if you've got a thing like this going all over the place, let's say, or like that and like that, so you get your, an answer from your subconscious and it's swinging around all like this one way, it's maybe going this way, the other way, you can't interpret it. And that's what we will be on. Nice and simple. So how do you know that it's not your hand doing it? It is your hand doing it. Oh, that's what we're doing, okay. If consciously, it is your hand or your arm doing it. Okay. And this is important because you need to know when you are doing it. Yes. Yeah. And you're purposely doing this right now. And you're holding it all the way up to the top. Yeah. This will help you do it more. You see it? How are you getting on? Front and back? No, you need to stop it going from here. So you go from here to here and no more. And back. And back the other way. And back the other way. That's good. And back the other way. And back the other way. Now keep practicing that. There, and back the other way. Can you, can you take the thumb off it a little bit and just, just allow it to sit in this one? Just like that. Ah. See? That's dropping down again. Doesn't matter, just, yeah. just sits back there. Okay, yeah, twist one way. Twist back the other way. That, that's too too loose in here. Yeah, that's too loose. So tighten it up a little bit. Feel mine. Feel the feel the feel the amount of yeah, move it to the side. It's that kind of a movement. So it's not going to blow in the wind. Okay. And we just twist your wrist. That's it. And back again. The other way. And back again. That way. And back in. Keep practicing that. Let's just take it so that I'm on a pendulum. I've ne let's say I've never touched a pendulum before. Here I am with a pendulum. I'm expecting now that my subconscious is suddenly going to find a way of giving me information that I can decide and, and understand. Oh, look, it's moving around in circles. That must mean something. Well, what does it mean? What did you set it up to mean? I don't know. Well, then it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> okay. So you need something simple. Well, let, let's say this is a, a backwards and forwards is my yes. And this is my no. And we can start with some basic things with a pendulum. You can say you, you, you start yourself with, say, truth and lies, working with people. So I can say three truths. Say, I'm male. Yes. I'm conditioning myself, okay? I'm married. Yes. I have five kids. No, I don't. It's mm -hmm. nice to know I have two. Nice to know it's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but th this is where you begin to test it. You set the system up that you want. And this is all we're doing at this stage is setting up a response that will mean meaning. And the simplest way of getting is a yes-no response. And all we're going to do to begin with, we're not going to be doing water today, but we're going to be looking at the different frequencies of sound that emanate from the inner core of the Earth. And we're looking for the linear concentrations of these sound, and we're going to map them and follow them. Okay? And once we've picked up and understood one, which is conditioning again, we're going to set you off in another direction to see if you find anything else like that. And when you do, we're going to investigate it. And if you do it right, you'll find it's exactly where it is on the map. This is not dowsing. I need to get you conditioned to a specific area, just like we would be standing over water to try and get our subconscious to connect with that water and the signature from that, the frequency from that. We're going to start with where I know there's an energy line and you don't. You have to take my word for it. So this is the part of the suggestive phase. If I walk across this particular area looking for this energy line that I know is here, as I walk, I'm entering into it like that and you'll see my rod move along and here. If I walk out, it's just coming out the other side like this. So I'll walk through again this way and I'll walk into it and I'll carry on and I can walk out of it just here. And I can do it with my eyes shut as well, which you'll probably do later as well. But you'll see there's an outside edge on both here and you'd find the middle is about here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you lining up in here just so that your subconscious can be told this is a high pressure area linear concentration of uh, energies. The more you do this the better you get. So you can try this a few times. Go back a few steps. 
You can actually go two few steps to the side, move again, keep going back a few steps, two steps to the side, step and again. <laughs> 